And our final speaker that we're moving to now is Jennifer Scott. So we're moving back from Queensland back to New Zealand again with Jennifer, who is a registered nurse and has been for around eight years working in a variety of different areas and has also travelled extensively in Europe and lived in Australia, the United States and the United Kingdom. Um, Jennifer is from Dunedin and returned when she was 30 and started working again in mental health nursing. And I'm very interested to hear uh, what Jennifer has to say as a health professional. So over to you, Jennifer. I'm across the ditch and I'm um, in the South Island. So it's um, it's not really that warm here at the moment, a bit cold. Back's the shush. Right. Um, so how I fell down the gender rabbit hole was noticing um, the medical records being changed um, on my ward and noting an increased admission rate to the ward with people with gender dysphoria. This wasn't being recorded as such and the trans label was being placed onto them. Um, so I'd worked in mental health within the last three to four years and I actually moved to a, a, a better ward, I, you could say, within the um, this was a, couple, a year or two ago now. So I was only there for about six months. So I could see the increased admission rate even in that six month period. Um, then looking internationally and at women's rights groups, I saw the correlation and realized what side of history that I needed to be on. Um, yeah, we had a couple of adult males who came in that had medical records changed. Um, and also then the younger ones as well. So my my concern with the older ones was that, well, hold on, I'm having to say this guy is a female when he's not, and what's going to happen when he leaves the ward? You know, he's going to go out into society, and if I'm saying, yes, it's okay on the mental health ward, then what's he going to think outside of here? Um, and then with the young children, definitely... Um, the, the trans narrative and the influence of online um, is massive. It just, that's where it comes from, ultimately, at the end of the day. And then I realised that, holy moly, as well, they're teaching us in schools. So, he, like, it's bound to, we're bound to see it at the other end, at our end. Um, so I had some influence on the ward and wrote my documents, um, New Zealand and Gender Dysphoria in Youth, which is this one here. Um, a few pages long, um, as I could see the political climate and the legislation that was going to affect it all and create children with gender dysphoria. So I wrote this in May um, 2021. Um, so the legislation that was coming through was the BDMRR bill, the conversion therapy bill, and then eventually the hate speech. I was like, well, that all links up quite nicely. Um, so at the time, I didn't know of any other medical professionals speaking out in New Zealand or writing on the subject. Um, and many of the current politicians, they have a copy of my document. Um, and at the end of it, I've just asked for an urgent review of puberty blockers. So it's been over a year. I mean, none of them, all of them ignored that. So it's been over a year. So it wasn't until September this year that the Ministry of Health updated their website and removed safe and fully reversible from its website. Um, and that was after the Travis Stock Clinic was asked to close in the UK. Um, so I spoke with a few clinicians who I had a good relationship with on the ward. Um, and of course, it wasn't really a topic that anybody wanted to talk about. And it was also known to be a political topic. Um, so I was in a position uh, working in the health sector where the top-down legislation was affecting us, affecting me at the bottom. So I could see it. it's all perfect where, perfect flow, really. Um, then I met other wonderful women at um, Speak Up for Women events where we talked about the BDMRR bill. And it was in these early stages that I was realising that I was not only fighting for young other young girls, but also for myself. Um, so it's being a bit of a juggling act, trying to remain professional, but also speaking out against it all at the same time. Um, so I'm just going to quickly go on to a, um, a slideshow presentation, and I'm going to talk a little bit about breast binding. Because um, ultimately, as a registered nurse and as a nurse, we're the ones that have to then why would I be promoting this stuff when at the end of the day, I'm going to be have to cleaning up the mess from the girls who have 
done their breast binding wrong and they've got scars and they've got, you know, all these physical and psychological um, things done to them. So I'll just swap over. <clears throat> breast binding has multiple negative physical complications. Um, Long-term use can cause fracture of ribs and prevent adequate breathing. And adequate use can cause bruising, scarring and permanently damaged breast tissue. Um, so a small case study for um, medical professionals is that a young girl presents at ED who, who is lethargic and has a fever. On closer inspection, she's wearing a binder, which has now cut her flesh as an infected. Her breathing has also been impacted. As a healthcare professional, it's unacceptable to ignore this issue and show her how it should be done. She needs therapy to help her with her negative self-thoughts, not provided affirmation of her dysphoria, which has led to self-harm. Doctors, stop. Your diagnosis of F to M is wrong. No child should have medical notes written in this language. It's gender dysphoria. And ultimately, I kind of feel like it's just it's sloppy, sloppy medical care that's taking place. And the assessment um, is being rushed and the, the, the doctors don't know the term. Lots of doctors don't know the term gender dysphoria. And so they're just going along with the trans narrative. Um, so here we can see binder, of course, at what's the difference? The trans ideology is anti-woman, anti-feminist, and um, it is just self-harm and self-abuse. And like we've said before, that um, you wouldn't give an anorexic girl liposuction. So why would be, we be removing the breasts of young girls who um, <clears throat> are really not loving themselves? So the next couple of pictures are going to be um, a little ex explicit and then not photos from New Zealand or Australia. I think they're photos from America. They've been found online. So if you just, if you're a bit um, nervous about seeing pictures of the surgeries, then um, just turn away. So this is all in the name of inclusivity, and this has been relabeled as top surgery. Um, yeah, and this is really sad, really sad. And at the end of the day, I remember when I first started seeing these pictures and it made me feel really uncomfortable. And that's what I want people to, to take home is this is an uncomfortable feeling and this is not right what has been done to these girls. Um, so the trans agenda in New Zealand is we've got the relationships and sexuality education that was released in September 2020 into schools. Then we have the guidelines for gender affirming health care and medical practices. We've got PATHA, the big organisation here. I'm pushing for an investigation to be done into this organisation. However, of course, it's falling on deaf ears at the moment. And then in our... Um, lovely healthcare system, we now have the medical records being changed. So this is the drop down menu um, in the system, which you can have um, not specified female, male, gender diverse, indeterminate and unknown. So um, I found that at the start of 2022, that would have been in like January, February, when a male on the ward had his medical records changed to female. Um, so I've done a lot of digging into this and how did this one happen. So this is where, unfortunately, for the BDMRR bill, they'd already pushed this through. They'd already done all the changes before we'd even got to vote on it. So, um, yeah, they're very cunning in what they're actually doing. So, yeah, then we had the ban conversion therapy bill and then the BDMRR bill, which equals confused youth sterilized children, healthy body parts removed, irreversible damage to families, um, rapes of women in prison, changing of language, sex-based human rights ignored and eroded, and profits for the pharmaceutical industry. Um, so next has been a bit of my activism in Dunedin and in Otago because I realized that a lot of the... Um, the uh, the trans narrative is coming out of the universities, uh, which we are kind of all aware of. Um, that was me outside Radio One, um, that trying to get them to interview me because they did an interview with uh, a group called Turf Free Odipudi on Instagram. Um, so they have been my lovely stalker. Who gives me they give me lots of airtime, so I don't really mind. Um, then we have the posters that I kind of put up around town and how they destroy them and what they write on them. 
stuff like this and they come up with some really interesting stuff really and I really love I love this one down in the corner oops Jennifer Scott did misogyny here so they're trying to accuse me of misogyny but it's all right because then people just go and look up my name and who's that yeah they spelt it wrong one time as well so um, then the ac other activism for like suffrage day I've been involved in, um, same with helping mana wahine korero in New Zealand, um, doing the chalking, um, mana wahine korero did a campaign of Mayday Mayday where we did postering. Um, last year was suffrage day, we did um, a stand to celebrate in the octagon, um, but we had about 30, 25, 30 youth on the other side of the road um, protesting us, which was um, a really interesting experience. And yeah, like other women all throughout the world, it's about now working out, do we advertise these things or do we just do it secretly? Um, and if we do advertise it, then do we need to have police there? And it's just, to me, this is just insane because a few years ago, <clears throat> Suffrage Day was celebrated in New Zealand like openly, very freely. It was advertised in the, the newspapers. And now all of a sudden it's all, oh, you know, who who are these women on the street? Um, so yeah, we had a really fun day last year. Um, and then this year we did it a little bit differently. So we didn't, we weren't based in one spot. So we traveled around Dunedin and we did little um activist things. So we did the crossings and made some fabric art in the octagon um and then my recently recent stuff was that so the nursing council suspends with anti-transgender activist and I was trespassed from the ministry of social development office in Dunedin after getting upset over a gender inclusive posters so there's a few um complaints that have been gone in regarding um, the, this one, the News Hub one, um, because they called me uh, uh, an anti, this is what anti-transgender people do. It's an opinion piece. It's not actual factual um, good reporting going on. And so that's as well what we're having to face is keeping up with all of the um, their stuff that they bring out, having to keep up writing in complaints all the time. It's just, yeah, ridiculous. Um, so after last year, when I keep falling more down the rabbit hole, I then joined um, Fully Informed NZ, which is the website dedicated to pupae blockers. Um, and we made some great discoveries and headway in highlighting the dangers. Um, then, unfortunately, due to the November 15th mandates with um, the COVID jab, I then lost my job. So I left Fully Informed um, due to then the media labeling me as an anti-vax, um, unvaccinated nurse. So I was being doubly whammied with no credibility whatsoever um, with that. Um, so then I realized, well, now that I've left nursing, I'm not working as a nurse, that means I can post more online. Um, so my online um, posting of the trans agenda um, and speaking out about it all um, has picked up. And from that, I got lots of written complaints about me um, from the trans community to nursing council. Um, then at the start of this year, I did a presentation to the DCC, which was the Dunedin City Council, um, talking about um, sex-based human rights and not having males in our female-only change rooms at the local pool. Um, and so then that got in a whole heap more of complaints um, about me. And so my case for my suspension, uh, my nursing registration had been building um, because I had never, um, they wanted to interview me via Zoom and I, I refused to do that. I keep sending them the research and sending them the information and writing to them. And I'm, and I'm saying, I'm not meeting you for a Zoom meeting. I'm, I'm doing your job for you. And at the end of the day, I'm not sitting in front of a panel of people who are the, you know, woke mob, really, and being paid by the government. Um, so it's on their back at the end of the day. Um, 
And all along my fight has been for young girls and to inform other clinicians about the dangers of this ideology. Um, I was close to doing a presentation for clinical council, which is the um, medical board um, in the hospital here about the dangers of puberty blockers. So that would have been great, but I would have gotten a lot of backlash from that. Um, however, I then lost my job, so I wasn't able to do that. Um, the four clinicians out there that are listening in, there is the book that I recommend, which is The Gender Dysphoria, Susan Evans and Marcus Evans. Um, and that's got some really great case studies in there for people to learn. Kind of in the process of finding a lawyer to um, fight back my suspension of being called transphobic, because um, it is my registration at the end of the day. However, I knew from watching internationally what was happening, where it would go. When I put my hand up to say, right, I'll take on the puberty blocker, you know, subject, I knew that it was, I knew I was going to receive backlash. So I was kind of prepared for it all. So um, I'll start working on finding a lawyer and going through all that process within the next couple of months, because ultimately it hasn't been my focus. The focus has been on speaking up, um, sharing information so that people know what's going on and um, help, you know, helping um, other women and young girls in New Zealand. Some of the slides that I shared, I've done some YouTube videos. So at the end, when this gets posted to YouTube, I'll post up those links to my YouTube videos um, in that. And yeah, I'm, I'm really um, enjoying working alongside lots of the other women in New Zealand um, fighting against this. And it's, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work and it's, it's ridiculous and it's sad.